Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel, um, and today I'm going to break down how I've built an audience through SEO. I've been blogging for many, many years now, well over 10 years, and what's changed from what, I'm do what I used to do before versus now is I used to build an audience purely through SEO, and when I mean SEO, I'm talking about text-based Google. Now I'm mixing it up and using a few other tactics as well as a few other strategies that's not just text-based content that have been working really well for me. I'll share my stats and I'll break down how you can do the same step-by-step -step as well. If you have any questions, you can always tweet at me. You can also follow me on Twitter. My Instagram handle is Neil Patel as well. A little bit about me. I'm the co-founder of Neil Patel Digital, which is an ad agency that helps companies of all sizes grow. I've created quite a few software companies. I've helped large corporations from the Amazons, the NBCs, uh, top 100 entrepreneurs under the age of 30 by President Obama. And the reason I'm saying all of this isn't to brag. You know, I have so many testimonials and awards. It's more so to show you that, hey, the stuff I'm doing works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't have these testimonials. I wouldn't have worked with these big companies. I wouldn't have these awards. So when I break down ways that you can build an audience through SEO and other strategies as well, just make sure that you follow them because if you follow them, you'll get results. If you don't implement them, you won't see anything. And here's the thing, before I dive into the tactics, if you're looking for a holy grail, right? You're not gonna find it. It's all about marginal gains. There's a British cycling coach, Dave Brailsford. And the way his team wins things like the Tour de France is by getting leverage, these little 1% marginal gains over the competition. Things like, is your seat comfortable? If it's not, you're not gonna pedal as hard. Did you get a good night's sleep? If you didn't, you're not gonna probably win the race. Did you eat a good meal and do you have enough energy? All these little things can give a small advantage and the 1% here, half a percent there, 2% there, it all adds up and that's how you win right? There's no holy girl. It's all the little things that help you win. And the tactics that I'm going to show you today on building audience that I'm using today in 2021 and beyond work really well and just try them out. The first, first hack I have for you is push notifications. And the thing with Google is Google loves brands. When someone sees or interacts with your brand multiple times, seven plus, they're much more likely to remember it, evangelize it, and that's how you're going to rank better. If you think about a lot of the sites that rank, they're brands. Why? Because they know CNN or Nike or New York Times or Business Insider or American Express. They're less likely to publish quote unquote fake news. Nike is so popular, more people search for Nike in America than the word shoes in America. That's the power of brand. And Google loves them because they know that brands are less likely to create fake information. They care. They have real businesses. So they want to see you build a brand. And one way you can do so is through push notifications. So when someone comes to your website, you can ask them to subscribe. And they can subscribe similar to email, but they'll get notifications through browsers. Um, with my own website, I've sent tons of push notifications. I get a lot of traffic. And you can do this for free using uh, OneSignal, subscribers, um, Push Crew, I think, costs money. But there's a lot of push notification tools out there, some free, some pay that you should check out. And you know, I even have a drip similar to email. So when you subscribe, I continually send you push notifications to your browsers from one day after another after another. Um, and I do this, you know, some days I'll send emails, some uh, more so, uh, some days I'll send push notifications and some days I won't, but I break it out. So my first push goes out 10 minutes within subscribing, then the next day after, then I skip a day and then the day after that I send a push and then I'll wait three more days and then send a push and then I'll wait two days and then send another push. This not only drives clicks and sales, but it's also getting the audience to keep coming back. Remember, it's easier to get someone to subscribe by clicking a button through push notification than it is by email. Yes, email users engage more, but it's not about doing one or the other, it's about doing both. And this is one of the biggest ways I've driven an audience. To give you a rough idea, push notification makes up roughly 50% of my uh, uh, traffic compared to email. So if I was getting 
100,000 visitors a month from email, I'll get at least half of that from push. So that would be 50,000. So that gives you a rough idea. Even though I have more push subscribers, again, they're not as active and that's okay, but that extra 50% is better than nothing. Another way that I've been building an audience over the last few years and this still works today is to translate my content. The biggest lesson I learned from a Google employee is the majority of the world doesn't speak English. And I'm like, Miley, I know that. Majority of the world doesn't speak English. It's not the most popular language. So I'm like, there's nothing new that you're telling me. And she's like, no, you're not getting it, Neil. If the majority of the world doesn't speak English, that means they're not searching in English. Yes, majority of the content that's out there on the web is in English, there's not enough content that's great and high in quality in Portuguese, in Spanish, in Hindi, and you know, all these Swahili and all these other dialects. So translation is a great way to generate more um, is a great way to generate more traffic from Google and it's not that competitive. And when we surveyed over 200 companies that generate millions of dollars. And we asked them and we looked at the stats and data, what's led to biggest traffic gains. It's been translations and a close number two was updating their content. Now, if you look at my own traffic, United States tries a lot of traffic, but so does Brazil, which very few of them speak English and India, you know, yes, a lot of people are taught, you know, in English, but there's a lot of other languages there. Spain is Spanish, uh, German, Germany is a German, right? And I'm starting to get a lot of traffic from all these other regions. So a simple way for you to do better is just translate your content. So if you can translate your content into other languages, that's an easy way to generate more uh, traffic and do well. But if you're gonna do well online and you want more traffic and a bigger audience, and they tend to even be more loyal, is translate your content. It's a simple thing that I did, works well, and I highly recommend that you do the same. Hack number three, who is Neil Patel? So Eric Schmidt, the ex CEO of Google, once had a quote that he said, and he said, brands are the solution, not the problem. Brands are how you sort out the cesspool. So I was like, how do I create a bigger name for myself, Neil Patel? So I had people all over the world on Instagram and YouTube and all the social sites do, who is Neil Patel? And Neil Patel stands for who is Neil Patel, but that's just in Portuguese. There was even this muscly dude who is a, a buff bodybuilder and on his pecs, he put Neil Patel and he did like a little Instagram uh, gif that kept moving and it would just show my pecs or his pecs bouncing up and down with my name and it created a ton of people to search for my name. And if you look at the largest spike there, most of that was caused from the guy who uh, put my name on his chest. But there was other spikes before as well, and it was all from the same strategy. And what you'll notice is after that was all done, you know, yes, I didn't maintain that volume, but it's still bigger than when I originally started, right? If you look at that note, it's still showing more people searching for my name. And that caused, Google to look at my site as more of a brand and my rankings for terms like digital marketing skyrocket to the top of Google and so with same with online marketing. So if you build a brand, you can continually do well and you can take that strategy. You don't have to do who is Neil Patel, but from creating good products, good services, good content, right? Uh, podcasting, uh, YouTube videos, all this helps. And another strategy that I use, and this is one of my favorite hacks, is host your site from a CDN. We all pay for hosting. There's amazing hosting companies out there like DreamHost and you should check them out. Um, but there's another thing that you should do on top of paying whoever hosting provider that you're paying, which is host your site from a CDN. And here's something interesting from uh, Fast Company. Every second delayed in load time costs Amazon $1.6 billion. Now that stat is a bit older and Amazon's a bigger company now due to COVID, but you get the point. It's a massive amount of money. Now, you're not gonna lose as much as money at Amazon, but percentage-wise, you'll actually lose more than them. So you know about CDNs, you've heard about them, you may be using them, you may not, but what I do is I take my non-static content and host it from a CDN. It improves the load time, which improves my traffic, which then allows me to build a bigger audience. And I would recommend that hosting your non-static content from a CDN is a great, idea and it also improves uh, or reduces your hosting bill as well. 
and it also helped improve my page speed score in Google, which then increases my SEO traffic over time. Hack number five, update your content. I showed you this chart earlier. Number one biggest gain was to translate your content. Number two was updating your content. So if you look at my traffic, I'm getting millions and millions of visitors a month. How is that possible? Well, I'm writing a lot of content. I have a team that helps me and the team doesn't really help me write content as much. They more so help me with updating content. And if you had to take a guess, how many pieces of content do you think we produce on a weekly basis? It's actually over 20. I myself am writing one new piece of content a week. My team though, they're updating literally over 20 pieces of content a week. They're taking all my old content and keeping it fresh and up to date. And by doing that, I'm continually getting more search traffic because these days there's content on everything out there. There's over a billion blogs. There's That's roughly one blog for every seven people. We don't really need more content. So Google has their pickings for any keyword when it comes to content. But what they want to do is rank the fresh, updated, good content higher than the old content. Look at Wikipedia. They have a huge community and audience because they continually update their content. And it's done through their community, but it works well. Hack number six, YouTube SEO. So I rank for a lot of terms on YouTube. Some of them are older videos, so they bounce up and down. And then I just update the screenshot from 19 to 20 to 2021. And my YouTube traffic is pretty consistent. It's great. I do it without ads. And if you had to take a guess, how do you think I do it? I actually don't do it by, you know, using some formula for content creation or anything that's magic. But what I do is every time I release a video, I send a push notification to that video. So it instantly gets traffic and I send out email blasts once a week to all my videos and I share it with my email list. Those two things cost tons more views. If a video gets a lot of views and engagement in the first 24 hours, what YouTube does is it starts ranking it higher for whatever terms people search for that are related to your videos. And what they do is they start suggesting that video when you're watching other videos. It's a really simple hack. YouTube SEO is the opposite of traditional SEO. When videos do really well in the first 24 hours of them being released, YouTube starts showing that and ranking that video really high almost instantly. Hack number seven, personalize your website. Google is taking user metrics into account. And I found that you can build a much bigger and loyal audience when you personalize your site. Funny enough, I was talking to a guy named Josh Axe from Dr. Axe literally a few hours ago. And he's like, hey, Neil, did you move to Tennessee? And I was like, no. And he's just like, oh, he's like, I was just on your website. And the reason he's saying this, because my website will put your city name within the home page, And that's really helped build up a more sticky audience and generate more conversions as well. And you can personalize, it's generated more uh, sales for us as well, 11.4%. And you can use tools like MaxMind to actually get this done. Hack number eight, and this is my last hack that I have for you, and it's my favorite hack, so I left it for the last one, free tools. So I have this tool called Ubersuggest. It's one of the best things that's helped me build up a really loyal audience. I give away what you can do in SEM Rush, like find content ideas, or you know see the popularity of a keyword, uh, all for free. And I have paid plans if you want to continually use it and really get the most out of it. But I give away so much for free, like backlink data, competitive analysis, I just give tons of information for free. And to use the tool, you have to register, uh, not at first, but if you keep using it, you have to register and it's free to register. And I collect some lead information and that's been really helpful. And by doing that, I'm generating a lot of leads per month. Can you guess how many leads I'm collecting a month? Take a guess. I'll give you another guess. Here's my traffic just to the tool. On a monthly basis, I'm generating over 200,000 leads. That's a lot of emails to collect. And that list helps me build a really loyal audience when I'm releasing new content, podcasts, whatever it may be. And it's been one of my best and most effective strategies to date. So that's it. Thank you very much. I hope this helps you build a much lower audience. If you have any questions, you can always tweet at me and I'll try to answer them. Um, and thanks for your time and uh, best of luck building your own audience.